What's, what's really great about what Steven has done here is he, he's combined all of the <clears throat> available art forms in the Hudson Valley to come together. And you can see that art gets this magnificent space over there, and you get a nice big space for music. And poetry gets this tiny little, <laughs> little space you can barely get in there. That's all right, you know, it's not about size, right? <laughs> But I'll wiggle my way through here to, uh, no, this was a, actually an interesting experience for me because um, poets don't get commissioned all that often to write poems. And I'm ambivalent about the very idea of writing a poem on commission because after all, I mean, what do you do, sort of say, Muse, could you meet me at three o'clock and we'll, you know, work this out. But um, this time it worked out really well for me. I mean, I'm not saying the poem was great, I'm just saying it worked out for me. And, <clears throat> I got this sense that there's a, something like a lineage of um, sense about space, of architecture. I mean, there is the great lineage of um, Le Corbusier and then José Ubrary and Stephen Hall. It's a bit like Ezra Pound, when he named his son Omar Shakespeare Pound, he said, just listen to the crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> But Stephen Hall, of course, would never say that. If it's <laughs> anyway, the, um, that sense of lineage uh, got me thinking because my, my wife, uh, Susan Quasha, and Muse said to me, um, make your poem about the first house. And that was a, a wild idea because uh, when I was in my early 20s, I actually conceived of a kind of life work that would be called the first house. And it was a sort of meant to be a kind of meditation on that sense of house that we carry with us or that we wish to manifest and that we count on architects to do for us and then have whatever relationship we have with that. <coughs> and um, I was thinking about what kind of a lineage that might be and, and it made me sense how much we owe to those who give us the, um, the permission to do what is most essential to ourselves. And uh, so this gave me a kind, of, a kind of special sort of permission. So, um, oh, that lineage for me really begins with William Blake. I always like to say that because the poem that I have written is in um, what I have taken to be a kind of special lineage from Blake, who wrote Proverbs, the Proverbs of Hell, in which he would undermine the very notion of proverb as a container of wisdom and made it something subversive and uh, transgressive and also amusing at times. And uh, so I, I tried to continue that. And I came up recently thinking, what is the definition of a preverb? I call them preverbs as opposed to proverb. And I, I, I wrote for this occasion that a preverb is the art of saving me from the sleep of wisdom and returning to the excitability of not knowing. So, don't expect to know anything. <laughs> so the poem is called The First House, and it's outrageous, unspoken uh, statements of living architecture, or the lingual life of buildings. Preverbs for José Ubrary. in two parts. One, I'm the architect of any space I pass through waking. Keeping my zero mind open, the world rebuilds me on the go. The first house is the site of self-opening doors. The space of firstness lives space further than space-time. The first house is not the same from the first. You still can't enter the same room twice. The living house lives first in the mind and then gives birth to itself. It owns the blood of its architect and that's how it gets in your blood. It calls up statements too outrageous not to be true. 
it can get claustrophobic in here alone with words. So I open sesame the syllables. My arm's length peri personality knows its space by feedback, cave breathing. I am only 3D as far as I go, in or out. Openings I hack let light play its colors. A hue is a violence with self-control. My rainbow body is calling me home and I'm taking my time. Making up a room ends in making up the mind. Buildings are self-fulfilling prophecies. Sharp, self-shaping life short circuits the architecture and space is born new. Two. The sound of feet proves floors are made for listening. Joints are sense organs for the swing of limbs. Our jungle genes are preying on time. The senses talk back to the world. I further animalize the surround. <laughs> Body is the inevitable cosmology. When we sleep in our bed as we sleep on a problem, insomnia self-births us. When a house is health, it sheds disease with ease of free airflow. Awake architecture keeps you on your toes to keep the brain living. The house thinks without transitions. Here is the everywhere mind finds. House sets rhythm of walking to tune mind. This lingual portrait flowing the first house makes its spaces on the run. The poem house is the houseboat of the animate tongue. House is first in living space at the level of poem. A room has insight. A lived house smells of self. I am with house as I am with book, with child. It's always now or never. The first house retains your ways back to zero point self. Thank you. But I have to stand here because I can't get out. Thank <laughs> you.